Hey guys, I hope everyone's having a good start to the school year, or at least as good as possible with the weird circumstances, some of us being online, some of us being in person or whatever you're doing. I know that I've posted a ton of music videos, but I haven't really gotten the chance to introduce myself. So if you don't know me, I'm Smurthy. I'm a first year college student and I started this channel a year ago because I wanted to do academic tutorials. I wanted to teach like chemistry, biology, physics, do this kind of Khan Academy style thing. And obviously you can tell that that did not happen. There are thousands of academic tutorials and academic channels on YouTube. I use those every day to help me study for my classes. So I didn't really feel like making another one of those would be the best or the only use of my skills because I'm not an expert in my field yet. I'm just a first year college student, but there is something that I am an expert in, something that I've been doing for 13 years, school. So I thought that I would make a series where I talk about how to do school because I think I've gotten pretty good at it over the years. One of the best ways that I personally like to learn how to do something is to learn how not to do it. And a lot of that comes from experience. So today I am taking my experience with school and listing the five big mistakes that I've made with my planning and scheduling. So without further ado, let's get into the five things that you should not be doing when you're planning as a student. Mistake number one is planning everything the same way. So what I mean by this is when you get that urge to be super productive and it's like 1 a.m. and you whip out your planner and you schedule the entire next day hour by hour being like, okay, I'm going to wake up at 7 and from 7 to 8 I'm going to do X and from 8 to 9 I'm going to do Y. And you block out every hour in your day and you feel super productive and you feel super good about yourself. How many times have you woken up the next day and actually stuck to that schedule? Probably not very many times. And that is not because you're lazy. It's not because you made a bad schedule. It's because not every task can be scheduled the same way. So there might be some things that you want to do for exactly one hour. Like for example, if you're trying to stay fit, you want to work out for one hour every day. That's awesome. Block schedule that. Make your workout 7 to 8 a.m. That works great. Or if you play an instrument and you want to practice for an hour every day, that also works for eight to nine. I'm gonna practice my instrument. That's great. But there's things like writing an essay. You guys probably know that when you're writing, one of the biggest tips people will give you is if you feel stuck, leave and come back with a fresh set of eyes a few minutes later and the writing process will probably feel a lot easier. So you can see that writing that essay doesn't neatly fit into a one hour time block like all of the other things you're doing. So maybe you're not going to block that out in your schedule. The way that I deal with these two different types of activities, activities you can block specific amounts of time for and activities that you need to give yourself a more flexible schedule with are I'll block out certain hours in the day to do certain tasks. And when that hour comes about, I drop everything and do that task. But for the more flexible tasks, I put them in a to-do list at the bottom of the entry for that day on my planner. So I know that when I'm in an hour that's not blocked out, I look at my to-do list and see which one of those tasks I need to go look at or come back to. And dividing this up, making this distinction between tasks that I have to block out specific amounts of time for and tasks that I need a little more flexibility with makes my schedule so much easier for me to actually stick to because I'm giving myself the freedom to work on each task the way that I need to work on it. And of course, determining which one of the tasks are uh, block out tasks and which one of them are more flexible is completely dependent on you. So it is going to take some experience to figure out which ones like to go in each category. But I encourage you to start thinking about these things in two categories. So you're not limiting yourself if you need more flexibility with a certain task. So now we move to mistake number two, and that is not having your entire schedule in one place. What I mean by this is I first tried Google Calendar for a while and that was super popular and I would think of something that I needed to do, but I didn't have access to my laptop at that moment. So I just grabbed my phone and put it in the notes app. And then while I'm going through my Google calendar later, I completely forget about the task that I put in my notes app. I come and check it the next day and oops, I forgot to do something. This is the problem that arises when you have your schedule in too many different places. 
And I personally have a lot of devices that I like to work on. I've got a Mac, I've got a laptop that is more portable, I've got my phone, I've got a tablet. So maintaining a digital calendar that's more accessible from one of these devices just doesn't work for me. So what I ended up doing was getting this wonderful thing right here. I have had these for the past three years. Last year's is unfortunately a little empty. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that, but a nice leather bound paper planner feels so good in your hands. I don't know if I'm just old fashioned. I do everything else digitally, but my planner has got to be on paper because I don't want this to be dependent on what device I'm using. I want this to be accessible anywhere, anytime. And that is why I chose a paper planner. Of course, you don't have to choose a paper planner and you choose whatever is comfortable for you, but make sure it's something you can access easily from anywhere at any time so you can put down your tasks and make sure they're all in the same place and you're not forgetting anything. Mistake number three is something that a lot of people don't think about, planning for socialization. Now you might look at me and think, you're a psychopath, you plan for your socialization, but no, it's so important. Me as a student, I've encountered two general types of people. You've got introverts who don't socialize at all, who just sit in their room and study, which I definitely used to do. And you've got extroverts that just take socializing for granted, like it's such a natural part of their life, they don't plan for it. But neither of those, in my opinion, is the correct approach. I think that you totally need to make time to spend with your friends to go out, maybe not so much right now, but hopefully after this all clears up, and to maintain your relationships because those are good for your mental health, for your future connections. It's good for you to do that during college or high school, but it should not take up too much of your time when you don't have that time to give. Like you need to set start and end dates or times for the times you go out with your friends because how often have you gone out and you're like, okay, we're meeting at 6 p.m. and you check your phone and it's 9 p.m. and you had planned to study for that test you have tomorrow from eight to nine and now you have to study from nine to 10 and your whole schedule is pushed back an hour and you're not getting the sleep you need. Sleep is important, I will always say that. So yeah, that's the problem that happens when you don't schedule your socialization. It happens at inconvenient times. I stand to say that socializing is important, but so is the rest of your schedule. You have to make it fit. Otherwise, you either cut it out of your life altogether, not good, or you let it control your life, also not good. Okay, so mistake number four is probably the most common and the most annoying because it is so, so hard to fix. There are no tips or strategies I can give you for this. You just have to do it through experience. And that is under or overestimating the amount of time it will take to do something. That's right, you schedule two hours to study for that bio test, but it's just not getting through to you and you end up taking three, four hours. And that takes up your entire afternoon. Now you've got tasks pushed to the night and your bedtime gets pushed back later and later and later and that's not good for you, you don't wanna be taking that bio test without sufficient sleep the night before. So the way that I address this is honestly just tracking and observing. Like with my schedule, I will have my schedule laid out and the next day, once I've actually followed that schedule, I will put the schedule I actually followed right next to the schedule that I planned and I'll see if there's any major differences. Now at this point, I don't have that very often because I've really diligently kept track of this and I know my patterns and I plan for them, but it does occasionally happen and it happened to me a ton when I first started doing this. So this is a way for you to see what you're spending more or less time on. And please be honest, if you spent an hour scrolling through Instagram, please put that on your schedule because no one's gonna see this. Like I have embarrassing days too, but it's just for me, it's just for you to learn, right? So don't lie to yourself, be completely honest about what you actually spent your time on and compare it to what you plan to spend your time on and you'll realize patterns. We don't over and underestimate randomly. There's certain things that tend to take us longer than we expect them to. The only way for us to know that is tracking. So. Once you've done this tracking for a few days, you'll start to understand your personal patterns and you'll be able to plan more effectively. So your schedules start getting closer and closer to accurate. 
it's also a nice way to see your progress because your schedules suddenly start being more close to how you're actually spending your time. Your mental image of how your day is going to look is very close to the actual result, which is an amazing thing to have. So the fifth and final thing I'm going to talk to you guys about today is very simple and easy to overlook, and that is not putting in your schedule time for elements of your daily routine. Like I help people with their schedules a lot, like especially students who are my age or a little younger, and I will see people put in their schedule 7 a.m., wake up, 7.15 a.m., start walking to class, and I'm like, dude, you need to get out of bed, turn off your alarm, and let's be honest, that's not going to happen immediately. You got to go brush your teeth, you know, get yourself ready for the day, get your stuff for class. That's going to take you time. And you need to also schedule time for meals, time for your nighttime routine, whatever that looks like before you go to bed. Like those things don't happen automatically, even though we feel like they do. They do still take time. Time does not stop for your daily routine. So you still got to consider those things when you're putting them in your schedule. Make sure you're leaving little five, 10 minute gaps to do those things for transitions and routine elements. And that'll help you uh, not get behind on your schedule and make sure you're keeping a schedule that's realistic for you. So that is actually all for my planning mistakes video. I hope this was useful to you guys and you'll start trying out these techniques in the future. And if there's anything else you want to hear about, like study tips or life as a student, those are definitely things I want to address in the future, please leave them in the comments. I'm doing this to help people. I want to share what I've learned from doing school so long. So please let me know what you want to know, and I will do my best to cover that. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more because I do plan to be more regular with this in the future. And that's all. So I'll see you guys later.